All right, let's go back to John chapter 15. If you're here with us today, we're continuing. This is part two of the series we call the Remain. And um, out of the text in John chapter 15. John chapter 15. We're going to start with verse 4. Remain in me and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. Verse 7, but if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love. Just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love love would you bow your heads with me this morning father we thank you so much for your word we thank you for your faithfulness for your goodness for your love lord and we just ask that you would speak to us we have come here with an expectation to hear from you god i pray that you would give me the grace and the anointing and the power to deliver your word that it would transform our life and Lord, I come against every spirit of religion, every distraction, every uh, attack of the enemy in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you that you will touch us today and transform our life. Amen. Amen. So we're talking about remaining and there's so much said in just these few verses that we read. What we possess, what we access by faith through remaining in Jesus. This is Jesus talking to his, uh, to his disciples right before the death and resurrection, right before his departure, physical departure from the earth. And so he's kind of giving them that mission statement that Alexis, Alexis, where are you, man? You are one of a kind. Let's give it up for Alexis. What an amazing anointed man. Thank you for sharing that word. What a powerful word. And He's telling them that mission statement. He's pretty much concluding and telling them, this is what you really got to do as my disciples. So the branch in this story is the disciples of Jesus. The vine is Jesus himself. And the vine keeper or the gardener is the father. So he's saying that apart from me, guys, you can't do anything. I am the vine that everything you're going to do, you can only do through me. You can't even be connected to the Father without me. So he's kind of saying some of the most important, valuable words to his disciples. It's, it's like a mission statement to the people that are going to continue the work that Jesus was doing when he leaves. Okay, so Jesus is the vine and he's outlining this that I am the source. And I'm so glad that it was his initiative for us to be connected. He's the one who made that possible, that me and you are connected to the heart of God, that me and you are connected to heaven, that me and you are connected to the authority and the power that is given to us as a branch that's connected to that root system. And that's his disciples. But he also says that every branch that does not produce fruit will be cut off. He also mentions the fact that we still have a choice to remain, that it's a continuous process. And that word remain is many words. If we can put up the meaning of that word on the screens. But it uses some of the words like continue. You know, to remain is to continue, endure, last. It also means to live, like to abide. And you know, like even a place where the disciples came to Jesus and says, where do you live? Where do you stay? It's that same word manna, that same word remain. It's a place that I stay in. 
It's a place that I live in. You see, so remaining is not connecting to God, you know, on a specific day or a specific Sunday, but it's staying in that place. And it kind of might seem so hard and impossible. You ever try to, like, remain in the Word of God? I remember I thought, man, I'm going to try to always think about the Word of God. I'm going to always try to read, even when I'm driving. But, you know, if you think about trying to remain in your own strength, it's almost impossible. Right? It's like, how do I always remain in Him? And how do I not be disconnected from Him? So remaining is a place that I'm living in. I'm living in that place connected to Jesus. I'm I'm attached. I'm joined together with Jesus and everything he represents. And in fact, the inheritance I have because of who I'm connected to comes through maturity. So if I stay in him long enough, I begin to see the fruit of my remaining in him. It was always there. It was just a matter of time. And so when I thought about remaining, because this, this, this chapter is so fascinating. How many of you guys would agree? Like, you read this and you're like, wow, I can actually come to a place where anything I ask will be given to me? Wow. I can come to a place where my life is so effective and so productive. I want that. Do you want that? I want that too. But I started to see why... Do we reach such a success? Why do we enter such an authority and such a power? It's only in the context of remaining in him. Because we come into a place of actually living out his will, his passions, his desires. And his power flows through all of that. You know, I... um, It's like like, uh, one pastor said that when... When you begin to minister, it's like you put, God puts this jacket on you of his anointing and his power. And, and, and you minister, and when you minister, everything is so effective and so sharp and so to the point, And miracles happen, and God begins to move. And then when you're done ministering, he just takes the jacket off. And sometimes you can still feel it wearing off, the anointing of God. But, but there's an anointing that comes upon our life for the service that God called us to do. For the work that God called us to do. And we enter into that through remaining in him. And absolutely, you know, he says here that if, if you remain in me, it, you are my true disciples when you bear fruit. You know, so, so of course that will be the manifestation. That will be the byproduct of me being connected to God. But let's, let's cover some of these points that I, I, I prayfully wrote down and, 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 and thought about a lot in John 15. I think that I remain, point number one, if you could write this down, if you're taking notes, I remain through the Holy Spirit. Turn to the person next to you and tell them, I remain through the Holy Spirit. So, so I don't just remain on my own effort. I, I remain by trusting and surrendering to the Holy Spirit who is always with me. The Holy Spirit is always with me. And the Bible says that in John 15, uh, sorry, in John 14, 16, he says, and I will ask the Father, this is Jesus, right before chapter 15, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads you into all truth. So the Holy Spirit is the one that allows you to really remain. He's always with you. He will never leave you. And so how do I remain in him always? How do I stay in that place? How do I live in that place? It's through the Holy Spirit. And I think many times it's just becoming more aware of the fact that his presence is in your life. You know, sometimes we go through situations and and like... Like Alexa said, sometimes we go through uh, winnings. Sometimes we go through not so good moments. Sometimes we go through all kinds of things. But in the midst of all that, to learn to be aware of the fact that the Holy Spirit is in me. Always. He never leaves me. And I can abide in the peace of God, in the joy of the Lord. I can abide in his promises through the Holy Spirit. 
Can somebody say amen? Point number two that I want you to write down. How do I remain? How do I remain in him? And to me, this is a huge one. I remain in him by remaining in his word. I stay connected to God by being connected to his word. Jesus is the word. He's the author of this Bible that we read. And I get to fellowship with God. I connect with God through his word. And this is a big one because a lot of us today, we stop reading the Bible. A lot of believers today stop reading the word of God. But we remain in God by remaining in his word. And in John 15, 7, it says, if you remain in me and my words remain in you. If you remain in me and my words remain in you. You know, and when, when we talk about the Bible, I think it's important to understand that it's not just reading the Bible. And, and I, I would like to give you three simple ways of how to remain in the word of God. Number one is to read. Read the Bible. Turn to the person next to you and tell them, read the Bible. Come on, read the Bible. That's, that's where it starts is just reading the Bible. Even if you think it's religious, even if you think it's a routine, even if you think it's a repetition, I don't care what you think about that. But you got to come back to reading the word of God. Got to come back to that. That's the beginning. That's where God will initiate conversation. You just got to come back and read. It doesn't matter if you feel like you're faking it. Fake it until you make it. It doesn't matter if you feel like you're being religious by doing that. It's actually your flesh that feels that. And it's lying to you because the word of God has power in itself. But before you sit down and read the Bible, I would encourage you to open up your spirit for the hearing of his word. Take some time. You know, take a minute to just pray. Take a minute to pray in the Holy Spirit or to just ask him, would you reveal Jesus to me? Would you connect me to this truth, to this revelation? So reading the word of God. The second thing that me and you should be doing is meditating on the word of God. We read in Psalms that if we meditate on this word, right, we will be like a tree planted by the waters. That we will be successful and we will bear fruit in every season. So meditating is thinking the word of God. So I'm reading the word of God, but now through the Holy Spirit, I'm chewing this word. I'm meditating on this word. And the third thing that I do and, and, and all of us should do is confess that word of God. So read the Bible, meditate on the Bible. You have the Holy Spirit who can break this word to you, who can, who can explain what he really meant when he said that. How many of you read the Bible and just didn't understand anything that it said? Well, guess what? You're connected to the author. You're sitting with the author of this word. Holy Spirit, what did you mean in that verse? What, what did, I don't fully understand that. Can you imagine like, you know, people come and have book signings. You ever had a favorite book that you were like, man, this book is amazing. And then there was a, a time where the author was there doing the book signings. Well, can you imagine... Not having the author just sign your book, but have the author live with you. And now you're reading the book and the author's just there. And you're like, so when you wrote this, what did you feel? Like, what were you going through when you wrote this? And you're connected to the author throughout the book. So uh, sometimes uh, I found myself just trying to read the Bible as though I'm studying, but not communing, not fellowshipping. So the Holy Spirit is is the one through whom we're able to remain in God. But now he gave us his word and we get to remain in God through his word. And I think, um, you know, reading, meditating, and confessing. And when you confess, it's out of that place where that verse or that scripture becomes real to you. Where it matures on the inside of you. See, the Bible says faith comes by hearing. You see, hearing doesn't stop. It's not hearing once, it's continuously hearing God. Faith comes by hearing. But the, the channel of the hearing in our life comes by the word of God. 
So this word is that place where I begin to hear God. Where I begin to commune with God. Where I begin to have fellowship with God. And then I face different situations, but now this word is in me. I'm not just remaining in him, but his word is remaining in me. And because his word is on the inside of me, I'm facing a situation and I'm like, nope, no. That's not how the story ends. That's not what's going to happen. I know what's going to happen. His word is remaining in me. I heard the good news. I know the end. I know what's going to happen. And you begin to live out that reality and that revelation and that truth that comes through the word of God. And I know that it may sound so simple and so basic, but guess what I found out? The more I'm studying this book, the more I'm reading, the more I'm praying, the more I'm realizing that it's a lot more simple than I thought. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's like, how do I do it? God, you're trying to like produce fruit and try to become better and bigger and greater. But in reality, he's the one doing that. All I do is just simply come like a child into his presence. So I remain in him by remaining in his word. I love how Smith Wigglesworth said these words. He's a powerful um, man of God who uh, has went to be with the Lord. I'm not sure exactly the year. But he has done so many things by the power of the Holy Spirit and resurrected the dead and literally pulled people out of caskets. I know that this might be weird for you. And raised them back to life. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Death has no sting. Nobody can hold him down. And so when God began to speak to him, he would go and do it. And so he did so many things that were crazy to other people. Smith Wigglesworth. And there was a time when he said these words that really touched my life. He said, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm only moved by what I believe. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm only moved by what I believe. And you know, I, I begin to think about this phrase and I begin to see that truly it's like that in our life, in the good and the bad areas. When I'm under pressure, when I'm cornered, I will do what I believe. And the Bible says that we will walk by faith and not by sight. And I realized that so many times we allow what we see and what we feel change what we believe. But I believe that when we allow the word of God to remain in us, when we allow the word of God to be inside of our hearts, we begin to change what we see through what we believe. We don't allow what we see to change what we believe. We begin to change what we see through what we believe. You see, we are people of faith. Amen? We are people that walk by faith, that place our faith in Jesus Christ. And that faith is fed and nourished and matured through the hearing of God's word. And I understand that sometimes it's just studying. Sometimes it's just reading. But I'm sure most of you have experienced this, that when you get into the word of God, eventually there's that still small voice that you begin to hear through reading the Bible. Anybody experienced that before? Just, I'm just curious. When you read the Bible and it's that still small voice in your soul, in your spirit, you, you, you begin to hear this like, almost like somebody talking to you. And, and, and giving you thoughts and revelations of the scriptures you're reading. So I found the Holy Spirit in the Bible. I found the Holy Spirit, his presence in the word of God. And I, and, I, and I know sometimes when I would just sit down and read this Bible, maybe I came in feeling defeated, feeling discouraged. But I began to sit in the word. And all of a sudden I entered into fellowship with the author. The Holy Spirit. I 
Another scripture I wanted to give you for this point is John 8, 31. Jesus said to the people who believed in him, you are my true disciples if you remain faithful to my teaching. And you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. If we can have the worship team come. You are my true disciples if you stay faithful to my teaching. And then he says, and then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. We know that that word know is the word experience. So let's, let's look at this one more time. You are my true disciples if you stay faithful, if you stay, if you remain. That word stay, again, is that word mano. Remain in my teaching. Stay faithful to my teaching. And see, this is the context through which or condition through which I come to the experiencing of God's word. I've realized that there's a difference between knowing God's word and experiencing his word. So as I remain in the teaching of God, as I remain faithful, if I hold on to the word long enough, I will enter into the experience of his word. For instance, let's say I need healing in my body. And I take the word of God. And right now it's just information. I take the word of God I'm reading. By his stripes I am healed. It's information. Right? But if I take this word and I stay in that word long enough and I confess that word and I meditate on that word and I allow that word to mature inside of me, to become revelation inside of me and that word begins to work in my life and bring healing to my body, I now enter into the experience of that scripture. I now enter not into just knowledge or information, but into experience, into the transforming power of His Word. And when I am healed in my body based on His Word, that's when I know the Word. So that's why the Bible says, if you know the Word, if you experience the Word, it will set you free. Set you free from what? Sickness, bondage, defeat, addiction, poverty it's going to set you free because the word has power and when I allow myself to enter into the experience of his word it will deliver me Jesus healed people by releasing his word he would speak his word and I believe that me and you we need to come into the experience of some of these precious promises of God that he has given his people. And that comes through abiding, through remaining, through staying in the word of God. We read about Joshua. I, he said, I hid the word in my heart. Hide the word of God. Protect the word of God. Stay in the word of God. Don't let what you see, don't let what you feel change what God said. God is faithful in everything that he started, he will complete. Your problem is not a challenge to God. Sometimes God just likes to use your problem to lead you into a deeper knowledge of him. But your problem really is not a challenge. Your sickness is not a challenge for God. God is not in heaven thinking, man, I got to get more angels to figure this out because I can't defeat that cancer. He's already defeated that cancer. He's already defeated that bondage. He's already defeated that addiction. And he said, I've given you my word. And if you can come into my word by being faithful to what I said, you will surely see my power come into your situation and deliver you. You know, when we experience the word of God, it becomes alive in us. It becomes our passion. It becomes a fire in our heart. Remember the prophet said, your word is like a fire shot up in my bones. 
And I realized that when I begin to experience the word of God, out of that place is where impartation take, comes, where I impart out of that experience. We were talking with a group of interns about the difference between knowing and experiencing. And, and we re related it to fishing. Do we have any fishermen in this house? People that like to go fishing. It's crazy. I don't even know why you do what you do. But um, I've never been fishing before. And one of my friends in this church um, was so passionate about fishing. And, and, and he's like, come on, let's go. It's, you're going to love it. You're going to. He's so passionate because he's experienced it. And, and, you know, before going fishing, I could talk about the process. I could go on YouTube and look. I can study how it works and kind of relay the information to you, the knowledge to you. But when I went fishing, right, it wasn't just information anymore. I was engaged. And I, when, I, when I got my first catch and I was reeling it in, you know what? It just... Everything became alive inside. I started fighting this fish. I started reeling it in. And you know, I got to experience the information. And you know what, what I realized? That after going fishing, the way I talk about fishing changed. Because now I'm not talking about just how it works. I'm like, dude, but you know that feeling when you, when you get the catch and you're reeling it in and you're fighting that fish and it's like, go, and you're now speaking from an experience. Remember the disciples said that we tell you what we have seen and what we have heard, what we have touched. And this is that place where God wants us to remain in him and begin to tell the world about Jesus, not just out of information, but out of our own experience where we come out and we say, I have touched him. I have seen him. I have felt him. He's real. He's alive. He healed my body. He delivered me from my addictions. He set me free. He gave me peace. He restored my joy. He's alive. That's the message. That's the good news. It's not just a book of rules. It's not just a book of information. But it's the word of God that puts me into the experience of his reality and who he is. And when I stay in his word long enough, I enter into the power of that fulfillment. And his word begins to heal my body. And his word begins to deliver me. Let's, let, let's rise to our feet this morning. I believe that his word has power today. I believe that through the Holy Spirit, me and you, we can come back and we can stand on his word. And even though it sounds so simple, even though we're so prone to fixing our own problems and we're so prone to going and getting our own loans instead of waiting on God and waiting on His provision, we're so prone to go and get those antidepressant pills and, and, and go and get and see that counselor. But we need to come back to the Word. His Word is the source. He's the truth. He's the life. He's the way. He is the source. Jesus said, I am. I am divine. You can't do nothing without me. Apart from me, you can do nothing. But I got good news for you. I came. I came. I showed up. I initiated this process. And through my Holy Spirit, you can join me. You can remain in me. You can be connected to me through the good, through the bad, and the ugly. You can be connected to me because I'm faithful to you, not based on your performance, but I'm faithful to you based on my son, Jesus Christ, who died in your place and paid the price for every curse, for every sickness, for every bondage. I want you to take a moment and lift your hands and begin to thank him for his word. Begin to thank him for the truth of God. Begin to enter into the experience of his word.